Good morning, good morning. We have a long living tradition of expanding and opening our hearts. It's of no surprise that we Unitarian Universalists are predisposed to change. Change is literally baked into the bylaws of the Unitarian Universalist Association. So did you know our principles and sources were not meant to be static? I knew we called ourselves the living tradition because we consider ourselves flexible, reasonable, open-minded, but I did not know, and excuse me as I get a little technical here, that Article 15, Section C-15-1 requires a periodic review of Article 2. Article 2 is a section of our UUA bylaws that contain our principles, sources, and purposes. This periodic review is mandated to take place not less than every 15 years. Our principles were first created in 1960. A review happened back in the mid 80s, which added our seven principles and five sources. This mid 80s review was led by mostly women who advocated to replace sexist language with gender neutral language. In 1995, earth center traditions were added as a source. We haven't had any major changes since then, even though the study and review of our Article 2 continue to take place. This is important. Just because a review and proposed changes occur does not mean the proposal will pass. Case in point, in 2006, a review began, and two years later, in 2008, draft revisions to our principles, sources, and purposes were proposed. A year later, at the 2009 General Assembly in Salt Lake City, Utah, delegates voted down the proposed changes. This vote was very close with a 13 vote difference, 573 to 586. To be clear, right now, in 2023, we are in the midst of such a review. Our forebearers who crafted this rule of periodic review wanted to ensure our faith deliberately adapted to the future and that we remain without a permanent dogma. When these 15 year reviews start, it moves along in a two year process of deep discernment that includes input from individuals and eventually voting by delegates. These delegates vote twice, once in a preliminary approval with a simple majority, and then a second vote that requires two thirds vote over two consecutive general assemblies. You know, our cosmic reality is that the universe is in motion, the stars, the planets, the galaxies, our earth is in motion. Our faith is in motion. For Unitarian Universalism to embrace the natural rhythm of the cosmos in which we are a part is a beautiful truth. Continuous change and reevaluation are a part of our theology. We are not called the living tradition for nothing. <laughs> we are open to new information. We have a culture of learning, a theology of applying what we've learned into our shared values. And I'm passionate about this because in our case, change is good. Some of us have been talking about voting on or doing our best to live into the spirit of the eighth principle. This is about stretching ourselves to not just do justice work outside of our faith communities, but within. I'm passionate about this because the current proposed changes include the heart of the eighth principle language. This is the inclusion many of us have been working hard towards. The proposed changes include a pledge to be inclusive, welcoming and accountable for creating beloved community. And I invite those of you who may be uncomfortable with the proposed changes to consider not the technical reason for why these changes are being proposed, but what these proposed changes and this sacred process can teach us. Every 15 years or so, when we go through this ritual of change, of transformation, 
Let's use this opportunity to remind ourselves of our UU theology of change. Remind us that we are meaning makers and meaning seekers, that this is not just in our congregations, but within our denomination as a whole. We practice what we preach. This is where we practice right relations, relational skills, listening to each other. This is where we hold space for grief. Yes, grief, our principles, sources are emotionally charged because they are sacred. They give us direction and shared understanding of what matters most. When something critical to the core of our faith changes, it inevitably changes us as well. So let's give ourselves grace. And I hope that when these changes are said and done that we celebrate the faithful process we engaged in. Not necessarily celebrating the changes per se, but celebrating our process. The right answer is not in the results of this review, whatever that may be. The right answer is in our process in which we covenant of our shared truth. So let's get into a deep dive into what this proposal says, this report that has now been given to the board of the UUA from the Article II Study Commission. So a few moments ago, we heard a reading from Article II from the latest report. In the first reading, this reading sought to clarify and reframe our shared understanding of what inspires UU faith. And I quote, grateful for the religious ancestries we inherit and the diversity which enriches our faith, we are called to ever deepen and expand our wisdom. As our understanding expands, we speak our truth. We cannot reach our goals without transformation. This reading also lifts our commitment to inclusion it acknowledges the harm caused by unchecked systems of power, privilege, and oppression. It pledges to replace these barriers with solidarity and mutual respect. This language makes clear our goal of empowering each other to participate without undue oppressive obstacles. This report expresses that we are inspired by multiple sources of wisdom and experience that we covenant and agree to replace systems that create barrier, barriers with solidarity that creates belonging. Our multifaceted inspirations and pledge of inclusion seem to set the groundwork for the next section of the proposal of this report that continue with values and covenant. It's clear that the spirit of our principles is here, yet they're now called values and are rephrased for clarity. This section includes seven values, love, justice, generosity, transformation, pluralism, equity, and interdependence. They read as follows. Love is the power that holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Inseparable from one another, these shared values are interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence. We covenant to cherish earth and all beings by creating and nurturing relationships of care and respect. With humility and reverence, we acknowledge our place in the great web of life and we work to repair harm and damaged relationships. Pluralism, we celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We covenant to learn from one another and our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, curiosity, and respect. And then justice, we work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. We covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive, 
democratic processes to make decisions. And then transformation. We adapt to the changing world. We covenant to collectively transform and grow spiritually and ethically. Openness to change is fundamental to our Unitarian and Universalist heritages, never complete and never perfect. Generosity. We cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith, presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of interdependence and mutuality. And then equity. We declare that every person has a right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money to build and sustain fully accessible and inclusive communities. These, these are what our shared values may look like in the future. There are three changes that I believe are important to acknowledge. The first is that in this proposal, there are no numbered seven principles. This can feel like a big change for some of us, and it is. Can we hold space for those who are experiencing grief? Can we remember that someone can grieve for what was lost while still being supportive of this report? May we remember that this space is not an either or, it's a process and a ritual of many feelings, many conversations, discovery and reflection. The second is that in this proposal, the eighth principle is alive and well. You know, did you hear it? Did you feel it? It's weaved into the proposal, into the um, proposed value of justice. And I quote, we covenant to dismantle racism in all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic processes to make decisions. The third change, the third change I wanna lift is the inclusion of the word love. This report, this proposal that's been given to the board lifts up love. The fact that we are just now including love is an example of where this report catches up to our lived experience as you use. Despite us holding up love in such high regard, it was never mentioned in any of our principles. It's time love get its proper recognition in place as a the, and I quote, enduring force that holds us together. All of this is to say that this mandated, spirit-led transformation is one of the most sacred, meaningful rituals our denomination engages in, and it has not been acknowledged with the deep reverence it deserves. So let's change that, starting with today. And this is where our next steps come in. What do we do now as a faith, as a congregation? What do we do now as an individual person of liberal, rational belief? So let's explore what our next steps could look like from the lens of spiritual practice, democracy, and rationality. Change is how we have chosen theologically to define our future. This is in deep contrast to some faith traditions which are deliberately static. It's not so much that we hold change itself as sacred, it's that our theological understanding is that we honor the interdependent web in which we exist. So our next steps could look like this. You know, we listen to the joys and sorrows of our community. We repair bonds broken, covenants undone. This interdependent web is about many things, including relationships. As we become aware of our relational concerns, we take action to make things right. We change for the better. We consider compassionate processes that support not repeating mistakes. We revise what contributes to failures. We remove what causes pain. 
We clarify our shared meanings and reassess our priorities in today's context with an eye toward growing together in a meaningful way. We embrace change to increase our resilience and upholding covenants in which our relationships can thrive. And yes, we may fall short, and yes, we must keep trying. The relational interdependent web is our reason. Embracing change as a spiritual practice is the how. The when is now. The where is within the UUA. It's within our congregations and within ourselves. The Reverend Kathleen Rowlands, author, UU minister for 29 years and accredited interim minister, who I had the honor of being mentored by during my seminary internship. She says this about our living tradition. Throughout history, we have moved to the rhythm of mystery and wonder, prophecy, wisdom, teachings from ancient and modern sources and nature herself. We move. Not only do we move, but we move to many wisdoms, to our many experiences. We move to the ethical rationality in our hearts in which we trust. We move to the scientific inquiry that says the outcome of our study will be better when we work together, take in various inputs and discerning good faith with good data. Yes, good data. When, when we call on the spirit of John Lewis's guiding principle, good trouble, this means necessary trouble to enact and inspire meaningful change. I'd like to add, and let's get into good trouble with good data. Good data in our sense is data that is democratically gathered, the facts and lived experience of truth tellers, where we name our grief while holding space for grace, holding space for the imperfection of our humanity. Change is often uncomfortable, time consuming. It's a time consuming process and we know this. In part because no transcendent power will save us from ourselves, we must step up, make it our business to understand the changes that may come to pass. We must step up and make it our spiritual practice to participate. Without our active participation in this process, there can be no good data gathered. And this is not a time to sit back and watch. This is a time to dialogue with each other, to reach out to the denominational affairs representative in your community if they have not connected with you yet. Ensure that you're updated on when and how to participate in this process. This is a time to engage with Article II study resources that are available on the UUA website. Use them as a source of study for small group ministries. This is the time to step out of regularly scheduled plans and add this topic to your schedule. This is a time to think about how you may encourage your delegates to vote. For the past few months, UUs all over have offered their voice so that the Article II Commission had good data to work in an inclusive way that captured many voices. Will your delegates vote for these changes, which include love and a pledge toward anti-oppression and justice? For the outcome to have the best result, all need to be a part of the process that gets us there. So let me illustrate this by saying that it's impossible to deepen without change. This is why we regularly reevaluate our principles, purposes, and sources. Are they doing the job we need them to do? Do they reflect who we wish to be? Jewish writer Avram Davis observed, and I quote, we are what we practice, end quote. So let's practice change. Let's practice acknowledging this every 15 year ritual with reverence and honor. Let's practice as my favorite philosopher, Bruce Lee says, be like water. Unitarian Universalism is a fluid faith. I further call on the wisdom of Bruce Lee as he reminds us, and I quote, 
Be like water, making its way through cracks. If nothing within you stays rigid, outward things will disclose themselves. Empty your mind, be formless, shapeless like water. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be like water, my friend. Some religions perceive being fluid and open to change as an invitation to crash, to lose power. We are so beautifully different. We choose our way forward. We create our future. We choose to flow and be fluid. We choose to perceive open-mindedness as a virtue. It is unethical to remain unchanged when good data comes, when our circumstances change. When family grows and a baby needs a seat at the table, we use our resources to get a chair that's comfortable and safe. If an adult now uses a wheelchair, in order to include them at the table, we must first remove the old chair to make space for them. When someone in our beloved community says our current principles don't do enough to keep them from harm, we must not only listen, but change. Change is a critical part of our spiritual growth and evolution as a faith community. We know not changing is easier. There is safety for some in the status quo. For others, the status quo is not so safe. It's harmful, oppressive. However, we are a people that journey together, not on the easiest path, but on the path that calls to the best of ourselves. Jesus could have taken the easy path, but he resisted. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. could have taken the easy path, but he had a dream. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges could have stayed at a school for Black children, but she integrated. Sophia Lyons Falls, Unitarian theologian, theologian, educator, and author, broke norms with her innovative contributions to our faith because she knew that what worked in the past would not serve us into the future. This is the path of love. When our principles transform, so do we. May we be true to who we say we are. When the status quo no longer serves us, may we choose to evolve, to lean into change as a spiritual practice, a fluid faith like water. We choose change. We choose love. <laughs>